Ah, greetings. Welcome to the channel. I am Braggy. I am your host of the day. Now today I'm here to talk about this helmet. And there's a few things wrong with it. Now if you're new to the channel, you don't know what we do or what we talk about, we like to tell folk tales and stories, but we also love our Anglo-Saxon and our Viking history. Um, we have a number of hosts over the years that have been on the channel and they're all experts, including myself, on this wonderful time of history and this era. You know, the Dark Ages or the early to middle, middle, medieval age. Oh yes, I think I said middle twice then. So, what am I wearing and what am I dressed as? So I'll back away a little bit so you can see in full what I'm wearing. As you can see, I'm wearing the kind of a dress of a Anglo-Saxon. I have a wooden, very nice, fancy tunic. I have a under tunic or under skirter. Uh, I have some nice embroidery on this wooden tunic, and this is actually silk, so very rare material. In that times, it would have only been got by trading and raiding, and I find that to be fascinating. And of course it kind of also shows off your wealth in the sense of you can afford to have somebody embroider your tunics. It takes a long time to embroider something. So I'm wearing a leather jerkin, I've got of course a Thor's hammer, my silver Thor's hammer, or Thunar to the Anglo-Saxons. I'm wearing a good old bag, it's got a few things in and I've got a few weapons. But most of all, I've got this Anglo-Saxon helmet. Now this helmet is a copy of the Benty Grange helmet. And I'm sure you agree indeed, from the side view and from the back, go around the side again, and to the front. It is a very, very nice piece of work. But there are a few things wrong with it. And I'll explain that. Now I bought this helmet many years ago, of Tyrkir, it was one of his helmets, and he was selling some of his kit at the time, and I brought it. And I think it's very nice indeed, and it's been very well made. Now I'd love to get an actual copy of the one with the bone plates. I think that would be even more fantastic, but I'd imagine you'd pay a few thousand pounds, even, even more than that, for a very decent copy of that one. And this is more of a practical a copy of the helmet for reenactment in the sense of going into battle. One thing I did notice when when I came down this path, I came down the path and I noticed I hit a branch on the top of the Thor, uh, the uh, ball on me, not Thor. I did not have Thor on the top of my helmet. It does make you think though why did I have, why did I didn't do that, I have a, a darty of Thor on the helmets and why they chose more animal motives. But I think that's just the tradition of the art and the way it progressed throughout time. And of course, our ancestors had a lot of respect for the animals. You know, the wolves and the bears and, and the boars. And the boar, you know, do not be mistaken by the fact that it's related to the pig. It is a very vicious animal if you're going to be confronted by one. And so, as I say, this is a copy of the Derbyshire helmet from Benty Grange up north Derbyshire. And there are a few things wrong with it. Now first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the cheap plates. Now it's got a very basic mechanism for the cheap plates. If you go in close, you'll see a ring and a leather thong. I myself don't like it. I think it should be probably a strap rather than a thong would be better. You don't have a great deal of room, so that's probably partly why it was chosen to be a thong rather than a strap because when you tie it up, it's pretty much close. And I often think to myself, cheap plates, you know, this one's the best one, the one that's been reattached. Are they a good thing? Are they, are they a bad thing? Well, well, I actually like a cheap plate on a helmet, because when you think about it, it does give you that extra protection, as long as it feels right. Now, as you can see, as they're dangled down, they're made from mild steel and they have a outer edge of brass. They could have used bronze as well as an alternative. Other than basically it would have been formed out of one piece with the sections here 
would have been removed and hollow so it's basically got these the main bit will be here I'll take the helmet off and we'll look at it closely closely there we go I'm wearing a hat of course and I, I will talk about that in a second so you can see mainly it is this a single piece going round the front and the back with these four uprights and then they would have cut this way and at some point they would have made the side cheek plates of the helmet or the side helmet plates there look and yeah I think it's very nice now it's not been bashed by a hammer so it's got a nice shiny look where some helmets like the other video we did when we looked at the helmet and talked about it it was more bashed in it's been hammered this hasn't this has a smooth effect so they would have had to sand this down after the hammering process and they would have hammered until they got it very very smooth on the small anvils they would have had and because it the ball would have been put on probably last i would say and would have been originally cast in, in bronze but that's not a bad example of a bore, but I've seen better, I've seen worse. Yes. Now inside you can get a bit of an understanding of the process as this cheap plate flaps about. Stop behaving yourself. Hang on a minute, there you go. As you can see, let's have a look. There's no signs of welding, so it's all been traditionally put together. It's a very tricky process actually, putting a helmet together. And if you don't have a lot of patience, trust me, you, you will lose patience with the process of trying to get these plates and the rivets to match up. But it does take a long while to do it, a good amount of time, but it's worthwhile in the end because you end up with something very nice. Now it's got another uh, avon tail, but this is just a, a, made out of sheet mild again, from a mild sheet metal. And again, edged with brass. And this is a permanent fixture. Now some of the helmets you'll see they've got things hanging down at the back or chain mail you, you could remove that but you couldn't really remove this without actually going to a blacksmith and, and why would you it gives you that extra protection on your back of your neck now there's three things that are wrong with this helmet number one this this cheap plate actually needs redoing it is an old piece of leather um what's happened is that when it was riveted they didn't put any washers behind the rivet so with the rivet being sharp on the edge, over time it's just pulled through. I don't know if you can see that. Whereas this one, I've kind of done a temporary repair and put a new piece of leather, but this leather was a bit weak and this section had a cut. So I'll put another reinforcement uh, bit of leather on. But that's, I think I'm just going to take them both off and just redo them. Does it have a lining? Some helmets come with a lining, some don't. I don't know myself. I like to have a good armour cap on or a good wooden helmet but even you could buy some 8 or 10 mil felt and make an armour cap out of felt because they had felt and I've got one of them as well and that's for the Coppergate helmet yes. so another thing wrong with this is this bore is slowly becoming un 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 unattached and would eventually need soldering back on now how, that, how they did that back in those days I'll, I'll have to really think about that because it blows my mind really but uh, you can't rivet this on, you've got to solder. So it's, you can't mould it either, so it's a soldering job. And it's just been coming loose over the years, really. It's a shame, but it's another job I've got to do. And I have recently brought, about six months ago, a, a soldering iron set and some gas bottles. And I'm going to have a go at doing it myself. If not, I've got some friends that may be able to do it for me. And, and of course, the other thing that this helmet got a problem with, it just needs an overall clean it's been touched and played with and and it's got you know slightly rusty in places so just a good clean and it'll look nice but it's a, a long-term future project and they've got too many of them now the nasal guard quite thin i prefer a thicker one myself and it's not the most comfortable helmet i must say when you're wearing it sound is very muffled in this helmet probably because of the cheap plates i'm muffling more of the sound and it doesn't fit right on this on this woolen hat so yeah it's very important that when you have the helmet it fits right yeah 
what do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you think about this helmet. And, and, sorry, this is one of those impromptu videos. So I've not scripted nothing. I don't have a professional team of writers behind the scenes and camera people and script writers and a massive script board. So everything's just done in the cuff. And so just bear with us in these videos whilst I do them more on my mobile phone. But I'm glad with this new mobile I've got that I've got uh, a, a good quality camera few more views you can see that's where I've grounded the old rivet away so I got to get some very fine sandpaper and just give that a going over it's probably the best way of doing it but it's just old it's probably 20 years old so or more maybe even older than that could be 25 or 30 years old only TK knows that uh, question because the original Bentley Grange helmet also had some very nice fine kind of a a bat wing shaped washer behind the rivets which if you see on the original horn reproductions is exceedingly very nice yes let's put it back on again with this helmet you don't really have to bend your head down and mar it to your head you can just plonk it on your head because it's just a nice size and there you go again and I guess to a certain degree we don't really think about it but we also probably sound different slightly when we talk with a helmet. I don't know, what do you think? Did I, did I sound differently from a minute ago? Yes. So just imagine, you know, 1400 years ago, around England and Wessex, you know, our ancestors would be wearing helmets like these if they could afford it, of course. But one of these would be like the equivalent of a house or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. So they're very expensive, just as expensive as a sword because there's a lot of metal in this helmet and you could do a lot with that metal you could make a lot of you know if a blacksmith wanted to make more profit he could make a load of saxes or tools out of this metal and you'd probably make more money you know because it's a very timely consuming thing to make you know, we don't think about it is it one of my favorite helmets to wear no i don't often wear this helmet actually you've probably not seen it often on on camera being worn Probably because of the state it's in and it's just got it just needs you know an overhaul i mean that's the problem with kit you know no matter how much sometimes you look after your kit some days it does you know get to the point where it does need repairing and some days you can't do that repair yourself that's why being a part of a viking reenactment group is great because you've always got somebody who knows how to do it and oh, that's wonderful so yes yes I can't really think of much else to say. I mean, would it be better if it was all black and this was shiny? That would look different as well. Yes. What would it look like without a cheap plate? Well, I think it wouldn't look the same without the cheap plates. It definitely brings it out, you know. And then it's quite difficult to tie this up because you've got to do a bow. And I think it's better tied up. Because that's another thing you don't think about. If your cheap plates aren't fastened up, they'll be waving about when you when you're running you know if i run here you'll see you know it, the whole, it moves all over the place uh, so you're going to get bruises on your face if not not your teeth out so it's essential that you tie it up as well so hope you enjoyed this video if you can do two things for me is share the video if you like anglo-saxons and you like vikings and your friends do share it with your friends and your relatives and so forth and leave us a like oh yes we love likes now i'm going this way now because i've gone and left an axe over there by a tree and i must go and get it bye Did you like that?